Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even higher the 1100 ladder. You know, I think posting that Steam Deck video made me lose a few subscribers because I know that I gained a few from that video, and then I lost them. So I think we're back to just having the Yu-Gi-Oh crowd. I'm not sure, but it, it was really funny to watch. So anyways, I want to talk about... Uh, the tier list here. Um, we do have a YCS this upcoming weekend. I was thinking about doing it after the YCS, but I was like, you know what? Let's just talk about what the format's looking like going into the YCS. Because I really don't think, unless like something insane happens, like Altergeist wins the fucking YCS, I don't really think anything crazy is going to happen in this YCS. I think it's going to be the majority of like what we expect in this meta, which is honestly like a 50 plus deck format, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a lot of different things that you can play this format, and I want to go through it, and I figured, why not use, um, I'm just putting the stuff on the back end that doesn't reflect the TCG, um, why not we use the same tier list that we used from before, and this is the same one, funny enough, I just had to reset it here, so, yeah, let's just dive on into it, starting off here with the obvious, Sprite is tier one. Um, I would argue that Sprite is leading the charge at tier one, just because of the fact that Cash Tira, you know, it, there are so many things that can outcash Tira, right? And so whenever you're looking at Sprite and you're seeing what can stop it, you know, it, it doesn't care about things like Nibiru. It can establish a negate either through Griffin Rider or Gigantic Sprite. It's extremely consistent. You know, sometimes, like, even whenever I was playing Cash Tira religiously, there were times where if I got hit with an Ash Blossom, I was going to lose the ball game because I needed that Unicorn to go off so I could start my engine. Whereas, I mean, if you open up Nimble Beaver and Sprite Starter, you summon Beaver and the opponent ashes you, you're like, okay, thank you. Now I can just go Starter and still pop off and beat you. So I do feel like just because of consistency, and I feel like consistency is king, I feel like that Sprite just wins out in the Tier 1. Still, Cash Tira, speaking of which, is still a Tier 1 deck, um, but I feel like it just it wasn't that Tier 0 deck that we were expecting. It's still a very good deck, and uh, it should be respected as uh, as such, because the moment that people don't start respecting it, it's going to come on in and tap that ass, and it's going to win a YCS, guarantee you. So, with that out of the way, we, we got to talk about Branded here. So, Branded, I, I still feel, is a Tier 1 deck. Some people say it's like Tier 2 or Tier 1.5. I don't like doing that 1.5, 7.5 shit. The, it, it's either tier one or it's tier two. There's no like, there, there's no fucking in between. Like you're either a tier one deck or you're not. To me, 1.5 is one. Like it doesn't matter. Um, branded can still do branded shenanigans. You know, we saw initially coming out of tier element, tier zero format that a lot of people went back to branded because the deck wasn't touched at all. Everything was still at three. And like, because of that, plus with the new support, it's still a very good deck. And I mean, people that have stuck with the deck for a long time know how the deck functions and they're just able to adapt accordingly to the new format uh let's see let's let's jump around a little bit here so uh, runic i'm gonna put runic and rogue obviously you have the different variations of runic right um I mean, we can't possibly cover them all in this tier list, but I mean, you have like for higher runic, Nichuria runic, um, that Ilya Higdon, a local Jacksonville player here, uh, actually won the Kissimmee, Florida regional with, he went undefeated and played Nichuria runic. And I feel like in that regard, when talking about Nichuria runic, it's definitely tier two. If you're looking at runic as a pure strategy, I do feel that it's very much rogue. Um, actually, I'm going to move it on up into tier two. I feel like when you combine it with an engine like Nichuria Runic, which is a deck that requires a lot of skill uh, and methodicalness, I guess is a word, basically just a lot of thinking. Um, when you are able to pilot it correctly, you very much do get rewarded. Uh, it can also be very consistent. You know, the Nichuria cards, especially like Sacred Tree and all that, is not once per turn. It's not a hard once per turn. So I feel like in that regard, uh, Runic, Nichuria, and all that's tier two. Pure is definitely rogue. Um, Spiral. I still have to put Spiral in the booty booty butt cheek category. We did see Spiral, I think, like win something or top something, um, but I don't feel that it really deserves a place in Rogue because, you know, if you're looking at like a regional and a YCS level, 
I feel like you're going to see more of like the tier one and tier two stuff. I don't feel like you're going to see something like even Infernity or Spiral or Crystal Beast, which I, I, if Crystal Beast was on this tier list, I'd put it in the booty booty butt cheek category. These are decks that if you're having like an OTS championship or something, you can very well or very much do well at like one of those events where it's like four, maybe five rounds in total. You play out top eight, top four and all that you will see success. But if you take something like Infernity, Crystal Beast, or Spiral to like a YCS, uh, I think you're going to get your shit pushed in and your booty is going to get destroyed and sent on over to the convention center next door. Like, I think that that's just what's going to happen. Doesn't mean you can't have success with these decks. I just think in the lower rogue tier category, I think that uh, you're going to start running into issues. Ninjas did just, I think, like top a regional. <sighs> I've got to put Ninja and Rogue. It's it's one of those decks, this format, that like I've talked about before in the meta, just instantly puts me on tilt if I go against it. And <laughs> I, I say that jokingly because like it, I understand that it's good. When it pops off and it's in the hands of a good player, it's good. Um, I do feel like you can see success with it, especially if like players don't respect the deck and like it just pops off and does well because of it. people don't know what your cards do. You're very much going to get rewarded. Valiance, it has a inconsistent as fuck FTK. It's booty booty butt cheeks. Uh, let's see here. This is by steel. This is like by steel good shit, right? Uh, we'll put this in rogue. I think this is like more OCG stuff, but we'll we'll go ahead and put it in rogue. Um, let's see here. This Gishki thing did not pop off like we thought it would. It's in the booty booty butt cheek category. Flunderies, I gotta put it in the booty booty butt cheek category. Like it's had some sparse tops here and there, like regionals and stuff. But I don't feel like it's really even in the row category anymore. Like, I just don't feel like it deserves it. Like, the loss of Barrier Statue is so painful. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You know, it wasn't the fact that Enpin made the end board good. It was the fact that the fucking statue backed up with, like, Enpin map and Dreaming Town made that board disgusting. Because you were forced to normal summon. Like, it just wasn't fair. Um, Eldelich is rogue AF this format. Like... Uh, Eldelich is a sleeper deck this format. So adding Nister, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't think I could put that in Rogue. I got to put in the booty booty butt cheek category. This card has fallen off so hard. Like it, it's, it's just not doing anything this format. Like there's just better decks like Math Mech. I would argue Math Mech is tier two. Like why play the adding Nister stuff when you can play straight Math Mech and just see more success? Like the cyber stuff, the attic, Nister stuff is, is good, but like we're just not seeing anyone do well with it. Uh, tier element. People don't want to drop this fucking deck. Uh, it's it's tier two. Not, not much else to say there. Sword Soul is definitely tier two. I, it's it's a very fair deck. It's very good. Ending on a Baron, a Changing, and a Blackout is disgusting, uh, but you lose to a Lava Golem in that case. So if you can deal with playing through that, then yeah, you're, you're going to have a good time. Uh, Sky Striker is very much rogue. It's it's still a solid deck. It, it's very much rogue. Um, Scareclaw, or not Scare, yeah, Scareclaw. I'm going to put in the rogue category. Uh, we've seen some decks mix like Cash Tier and Scareclaw together to make for a really interesting combo of cards. And if the opponent doesn't know what your shit does, uh, they're definitely going to get pants because of it. I'm going to put access code here with the math mech stuff because it's basically just like go second OTK with access code talker at the end of the day. Uh, but the Scareclaw stuff is definitely rogue, especially when you combine it with a Rise Heart. Uh, Orcist is, I feel like actually like, in the correct hands, I feel like Orcus could actually do something in this format just because there's so many different choices of decks that you can play. But as a straight engine, nah, the, the deck's booty booty butt cheeks. Same goes for Punk. You play it as a sub-engine. Like, if you're playing as a straight deck, you're not going to see success. I'm actually going to put Virtual World and fucking Rogue, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't brick, which this deck is known for bricking, and you just pop off Judgment of the Pharaoh, Unity, Yujo Friendship, all that idiotic shit, <laughs> like you're going to have a good time. This deck is definitely very rogue, but if you're like me, who, if I were to pile out this deck, I would just brick all day, you're not going to see any success. Um, I'll put Exosister and Rogue, sure. It's not doing anything, and I think that's just because of the fact that Tier has fallen off so much. Like, we saw for a while in the OCG that whenever Tier Element was just popping off doing well, the only decks that could really keep up, it was like Sprite, Tier, and Exosister. And Exosister only did well because Tier Element was a good deck, and it had an easy matchup against Tier. So, I feel like because of that, it does kind of suffer. I almost kind of want to put in the booty booty butt cheeks, but, I mean, it's a deck that's still at full power um labyrinth i gotta put in tier two uh this deck it, it puts me on 
tilt the moment I play against it. You know, being able to grab Eradicator out of your ass is just, it, it's it's good. It doesn't care about skill drain, to be quite honest. So, Dark World. I got to put it in Rogue. Um, kind of the same thing with Virtual World. It loses to itself. Like, it can brick hard as hell. Um, you know, if you open up, like, a hand of, like, a few Dark Worlds and, like, you need your Danger card to go off... And, like, you hit the fucking danger, like, you just lose. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've tested with this deck, and, like, I have no engine except for, like, a Chupacabra. And I'm like, okay, the Chupacabra needs to hit something besides itself. And then I hit the Chupacabra, and I just lose. Like, this deck is definitely an emotional roller coaster, but when it works, oh, my God, it does it work. Um, Draco Slayers, I don't know why the fuck this is in here. It's booty booty butt cheeks. This is also, like, a lot of OCG stuff. Like, this is Time Render Morganite. We don't have this shit. The new Super Heavy Samurai stuff we don't have. Oracle of Zephyr isn't even a thing in the OCG. Um, I think that this is uh, Rika Sun Avalon. I think someone had told me in my last tier list. Uh, Rika Sun Avalon is definitely very rogue. Um, again, it's one of those decks that if people don't know what your shit does, you're going to get rewarded. Tri Brigade Sprite was kind of a thing for, like, five minutes, but then it fell off. Um, so, I, I feel like Tri Brigade just... As a deck, even like Tri Brigade Sprite, I feel like it's tier two. I feel like you're better off just playing like pure Sprite. Like, you know, why why hurt your fucking consistency? Um, Dragon Link, Dragon Link, I'm gonna put in Rogue. Like, uh, it's it's still a good deck. Like Magnumut's not at one, ladies and gentlemen. The cards at fucking three. Like it, it's it's good. Um, and if if you know the lines in this deck and you just honestly like if you win the die roll, like you're very much gonna get rewarded for it. You just have to watch out for board breakers and stuff. Pendulum Magician. Again, I'm gonna put in Rogue here. Like, there's really not a lot to talk about with the Booty Booty Butt Cheek category for once. Like, uh, Pendulum Magician is a solid Rogue deck when you have a diverse format. Things like Pendulum Magician can come on in to the format and start tapping that ass. Um, and then Shadal. As an engine, Winda, like, just ending on Winda, Winda Pass is. Nah, I gotta put in Booty Booty Butt Cheek because. Against Cash Tira, like Cash Tira just starts smacking their lips. They're like, oh, this is fantastic. Use my one special summon on Fenrir, slam into the window, banish it, redeclare, deal with another issue, and then they just pop off. I feel like uh, Windows not very good this format. And then purely. Now, this is what I've been messing around with post new support out of Cyberstorm Access. Um it has potential. But right now, I think until we see success out of it, I gotta put it in rogue. Because I feel like, at least with the builds I've been testing, you've got to open up, like, three quick play spells to hopefully pop off. And, like, you have to be able to do that consistently. And surprisingly, I haven't been doing that consistently. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm just still trying to learn the deck. But, like, trying to open up three field spells to end on Noir is hard. Like, even with the new support. So, maybe we'll see something happen once, you know, everybody gets their hands on it and starts labbing it and testing it out. So, guys... Wow, a massive change uh, to the tier list compared to when we were in a tier zero format where it was basically just tier element, a tier zero, and everything else was just below it. All this stuff in here was booty booty butt cheeks because it just couldn't keep up a tier. And now it's like, unless it's like a table 500 deck, like, yeah, you can play a deck and have it be considered rogue and pop off. You know, kind of like ABC Theory on. Like, uh, if you would have asked me last format where I put ABC Theory on, I'd say booty booty butt cheeks. Now I would put it in tier two. ABC Theory on, uh, yeah, like it's it's tier two, like it's really surprising. You know, I saw it at table one at the Kissimmee Regional for a couple rounds, like it was really impressive. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below about this tier list. Is there any decks that I'm missing that were not included in here? Like I said, I don't know how to make these fucking things. I just find one on here and I hope for the best. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.